In this tutorial we're going to go through analyzing a magnetic structure using SARA together with FullProf. In particular we're going to go through the different types of symmetry allowed magnetic structure. Our starting point will be a nuclear refinement using FullProf and the files that we've generated earlier using SARA. Now going to FullProf we can open the PCR file and if we do that we'll find that there is only one phase in it, the nuclear phase. And we can see that here. Importantly, we have no refinement variables turned on because refining the magnetic structure may seriously perturb the quality of the nuclear refinement. Now let's run full prof so we can see what the refinement looks like. Opening the PCR file and running it we find the refinement is not doing a particularly good job and we can see large amounts of intensity that haven't been properly fitted. These are our magnetic peaks. Moving now to SARA, following the instructions on the right hand side, we're going to read in, using the full prof menu, the MAT file that's been generated by SARA representation analysis. That takes us to this window, which contains a summary of the different basis vectors and a number of controls. The basis vectors are numbered according to the atom number, A1 being atom 1, the irreducible representation number, gamma 2 to gamma 9, and then a number for the basis vector. We can select the different basis vectors that we're going to test simply by clicking in the checkbox. Also useful in the bottom left are the common irreducible representations. If we select these we find that the basis vectors above are automatically selected. This is particularly useful when we're dealing with a system where the magnetic moments are on several crystallographic sites. As following a naive interpretation of Landau theory we can expect the resultant magnetic structure to involve the same symmetry on both crystallographic sites, i.e. common irreducible representations. Now the first structure that we're going to look at is one based on gamma 2, so we see that the two basis vectors have been selected. The next thing that we have to do is generate the relevant part of a PCR file. In this particular example we're going to be using powder diffraction, but we could do this as well for single crystal diffraction. So simply clicking OK we see that two files have been generated. The first is a model PCR file and the second is a file detailing the calculations. We see that these two files have been created. Looking at the model PCR file first, we see that it contains a template for the magnetic phase. Starting with the remarks, leading through the details of the magnetic structure, finishing with the profile values and then the propagation vector at the end. In this particular example we selected two basis vectors and we can see that here, the variable nBAS. The basis vectors are described here for components over the three symmetry operations. Components along the A, B and C crystallographic axes. The first triplet corresponds to the first basis vector and the second triplet here along the C direction corresponds to the second basis vector. The next important thing are the coefficients, the mixing coefficients that we'll be using as the refinement variables. These are labeled C1, C2, C3, etc. and full prof. As we have two basis vectors selected, we need to be using two mixing coefficients, C1 and C2. Moving on now to look at the list file that was generated when we're making this phase, it's important to realize that in full prof we have the potential for generating the contribution from a magnetic moment several times. If we have, for example, eight symmetry operations and four equivalent positions, we'll double the contribution from each of those magnetic moments. Sarah uses a different formalism 
in which we use a reduced number of symmetry operations so that the contribution from each magnetic moment is used and generated only one time. This leads to a simplified description of magnetic structure that is particularly useful when we have a magnetic phase that has magnetic moments on different crystallographic sites. For example, crystallographic sites of 8 multiplicity and crystallographic sites of 4 multiplicity. We need 8 symmetry operations in order to generate all of the moments of the 8-fold site, but that will cause us to generate twice the contributions from the 4-fold site. To compensate for this, Sarah will introduce null basis vectors that prevent the contribution from a magnetic moment from being generated more than one time. At the bottom we have the final and reduced description of the magnetic structure symmetry. Now we will insert the magnetic phase into the PCR file. So opening the section of the PCR file generated by Sarah, all we have to do is copy this to clipboard, switch to full prof to open the PCR file that currently contains the nuclear phase, and to paste this just before the section detailing the two theta limits of the diffraction pattern. So just pasting it here. The next thing that we have to do is to replace the values for the scale and the profile coefficients. We can do this simply by copying those from the nuclear phase, the entire section, and paste into the magnetic phase. Make sure that you keep the propagation vector. Now we have to set our coefficients. As we have two basis vectors, we need to define starting values for the two coefficients and the refinement variables. The final thing that we need to do is to inform the full prof that we have two phases, nuclear and now magnetic. So saving and exiting, we can now run full prof. And when we do it, we can watch the refinement converge to a much better level than before. Running a second time just to ensure convergence. we see that the contribution to the diffraction pattern from the magnetic structure is now well fitted. We have these new peaks and the intensities match well the experimental values. Now in order to view the magnetic structure we can use the FST file, the FullProf Studio file that's been generated by FullProf and here we have the magnetic structure. It's one in which the moments are pointing towards the center of a triangle. The next thing that we want to do is to see how large our refined moment is. Opening up the PCR file we must remember that the size of the moment is defined by the basis vector being multiplied by the mixing coefficient, summed over the different mixing coefficients. The next thing that we need to consider is the occupation of the magnetic site as defined in the PCR file. Here we're using three. The three corresponds to numbering of centering translations in the rhombohedral space group that's being used to describe both the nuclear and the magnetic structures. Rhombohedral systems have three centering translations, so we have a value of three. This value should be multiplied by the percentage occupation of the site. In this case, the site is 100% occupations, so the value is 3 multiplied by 1. Because Sarah is using a formalism where the contributions for each moment is generated only one time, you don't need to correct for any general multiplicity issue as you would do for any nuclear phase. Remember that the details of this calculation are all given in the list file that was generated when we made the magnetic phase using SERA. We see the final description of magnetic structure at the bottom. Looking at the PCR file again, 
Remember that this scaling lies on the fact that we've used the same scale factor for the magnetic phase as we did for the nuclear phase. Because of the relatively complex nature of having to use basis vectors and mixing coefficients, it's convenient to use the list magnetic moments option in Fulbroff Studio to get the size of the moments. Here we can see for a moment at this position we have these three components along the A, B and C axis and a final moment size of approximately 2.1 Bohr magnetons. By keeping the scaling this way we're working directly in terms of Bohr magnetons. The format used by Sarah of only generating the column can sometimes confuse Fulprof and lead to erroneous FST files. To compensate for this I've included a routine in Sarah to generate FST files that should work. To do this we must first uh, locate the PCR file and then we click make FST file. When we defined our magnetic phase in full profits conventional to use minus one symmetry. In this particular case we used R minus one as our magnetic space group. Now we don't want this inversion symmetry included in our drawn magnetic structure so Sarah automatically removes it which is what you're being told about here. So we've now made an FST file and we can see this at the bottom of our Explorer window. If we open it up we'll see in this case that there's no difference and Fulprof has understood correctly the description for the magnetic structure that Sarah was using. We see again that we have 2.1 Bohr magnetons. Now going to Sarah we can try to refine our second type of magnetic structure. Simply selecting gamma 4 rather than making by hand a magnetic phase and copy and pasting it in we can use SERA to do this automatically. Now that the PCR has been defined all that we have to do is click on edit file. Selecting the magnetic phase the job's done the PCR file has been edited. If we go to full prof we can now open the PCR file and we'll see that instead of having two basis vectors we only have one basis vector. N mass is equal to one and we can see only one basis vector in the symmetry description. Because we have one basis vector we need only one mixing coefficient so we have to reset coefficient 2 to 0 and turn off the refinement variable. Launching full prof now with this new PCR. Gives us a refinement that is markedly worse than the previous one. There are major problems fitting the magnetic intensity of these peaks. Now trying the next structure which corresponds to gamma 5. We simply have to check gamma 5 we see that this involves six basis functions. Now this raises an interesting point when we're analyzing magnetic diffraction data from powders. Let's have a look at the list file, the F file, that contains the basis vector details. At the bottom of the list file we find the basis vectors and particularly we want to look at those that correspond to the representation that we're looking at we see that there are six basis vectors here. The first corresponds to a magnetic structure in the AB plane, the second in the AB plane, the third with the moments along the C direction, the fourth in the AB plane, the fifth in the AB plane, and the sixth, the moments along the C direction. Now due to powder averaging, it's quite common that different basis vectors have the same diffraction patterns. In this particular case, the diffraction patterns of the first three basis vectors will be the same as those of the last three basis vectors. So when we continue our refinement we only want to look at the first three basis vectors or the refinement will diverge. Substituting these basis vectors into the PCR file as we have three basis vectors we need three mixing coefficients so we're putting our three starting values and turning on 
the saving, exiting, and now running full prof. We see again that the magnetic diffraction peaks aren't very well fitted within this irreducible representation. Here's the fit and we can clearly see the problems in refinement. If we go back to the basis factor selection and look what would happen if we selected the last three basis factors again performing another refinement we find that the final magnetic diffraction pattern looks the same. As I said, the different basis vectors were giving identical magnetic diffraction patterns for a powder. So the analysis ends with us looking again at representation number two, which has two basis vectors. Scrolling down and turning off the value for coefficient number three, saving and running full prof, taking us very quickly to our final refined value of the magnetic R factor, which is approximately 15. So here we have our final refinement. Again, we see that magnetic diffraction peaks are very well fitted, and the determination of the magnetic structure is largely complete. What we could do now is turn on the normal Rivet refinement variables for the nuclear phase and the magnetic phase together, just to improve the final quality of the refinement. Finally, let's again make an FST file so that we can view the structure. using the one from Sarah as it removes the inversion symmetry. Here we are. The final thing that I wanted to show you was the option at the bottom right to use complex mixing coefficients. These are important when we're dealing with circular helical structures and elliptical structures as well as sine structures because remember basis vectors and the coefficients can be complex. If we check this box and edit the PCR file, what we find, just opening up in full prof, is that the number of basis vectors has been doubled. We have four basis vectors whereas we only selected two. What's happened is that Sarah has put each of the basis vectors in twice. So we have the first basis vector and the repetition of that basis vector. The first one, by having a zero here, is shown to have a real coefficient. Second time it's listed, the coefficient is indicated as having a one, which means it is imaginary. These two together, a real and imaginary component, give us what is effectively a complex coefficient. Here we have the second basis vector, again with a real coefficient, then being repeated with an imaginary coefficient. So in this way we can cobble together something that works like a complex mixing coefficient. That's it. We've done the refinement, we've gone through the different symmetry types of magnetic structure, and we've refined them sequentially in full prof. Whether a magnetic structure is commensurate or incommensurate doesn't matter. This formalism of using basis vectors and the files that we've generated using SERA work for both types of magnetic structure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and I wish you well with your refinements. Good luck.